Do, do you think um, leadership is measured through followership these days? I guess, you know, there's a lot of talk around great leaders being able to build great teams, for example. Um, yeah. And I guess leadership, to some definition, is leading somewhere. So there's some clarity about where they're trying to go yeah. and how to take people with them. And I'm wondering whether you sense a degree of dilemma between being able to direct versus carry people forward into these areas and engage people, if you like. Yes. Yeah, there's, there's a lot to do about that. And it's essentially the difference between autocratic and democratic leaders. Mm -hmm. And they feel very different mm -hmm. already. If I pronounce those words, mm -hmm. who, who would you like to work for? Which of those two? Mm -hmm. I think obviously the followers would prefer a democratic leader or somebody who works with them, you know, on a, on a, on a more equal basis. So if you look around the senior levels and organizations, uh, you don't see any voting for the next level up. So you don't see any uh, implementation of democracy inside organizations. Yeah. I know it's, in, it's different in the country yeah. and it's a great, uh, you know, it's, it's a great value that we've achieved this yeah. uh, in, in some countries, um, but we haven't achieved it very much inside organizations. Yeah. Uh, so one, one of the things that I'm thinking a lot about is when leaders have to adapt to and, and have to direct very rapid change uh, in, a, in a very uncertain world, ridden with, with crises as well. And they have to be doing this uh, in constant scrutiny and being out there in the open with most of their decision making, uh, then the democratic model is probably going to suit them better than the autocratic model. But most leaders are coming out of an autocratic model. They are appointed by more senior leaders. Right. Who, uh, so there is a, an autocracy in most organizations mm -hmm. and not much of a, democ a democracy, in my view. Yeah, it's quite interesting. I, I guess, what, what, in your experience, do you think attracts people into leadership in the first place? You know, what, what do you think are the aspirations and the motivations to want to lead? these days. And I'm wondering if there's a bit of a tension with that. I sometimes wish that leaders lose even more control. Uh, so I, I still believe there's too much autocracy, too much power right. invested in leaders, right. which they can abuse. Uh, so I personally don't mind that very much. I think leaders should work through influencing, listening, sensitizing themselves. Um, but it's a, it's a very interesting question about what makes a leader um, you know, there's a lot of goodies there at the top to get, uh, you know, a lot of power, a lot of influence, sort of, uh, I feel like business trips to other countries, you know, and also when, you, when you're there longer, this, uh, it's called managerial discretion tends to grow even further, even beyond your remit, uh, your remit, yeah. beyond your responsibilities, because you get to know people. So you, you can influence way beyond what you're, you know, your role is supposed to be. Uh, so it's it's all very, very tempting, I think. Uh, and on the other, and you were describing attention, there is attention. So on the other side, there is perhaps uh, integrity and a, a real honest wish to, uh, you know, help uh, the organization do better or to make a mark and make a difference in terms of, you know, uh, whatever the mission of, of this organization is. Uh, but it's sometimes it's a bit of a weak counterbalance to the kind of more uh, instinctual drives or personality aspects that make a leader. So I think there's something, you know, quite problematic in that. And again, I hope that if we have more democracy inside organizations, then that might balance that uh, uh, back again.